to everyone. Stephen, over to you. So, welcome. Thank you for your time. I'm uh, Stefan Collins. I'm from Belgium, so it took a while for uh, uh, getting here, but very happy to be here. Very warm people, so thank you. Uh, I'm Metaverse Partnership Director at Venly. Venly is a Belgium company, but we have people around the world. Um, so if you want to check out what we do after, the, after this chat, uh, check venly.io, the website. If you have any question or you want to follow me, you can always, it's my Twitter handle, so at Stefan Collins. If you have pictures or questions, shout, and I'm uh, happy to answer. So, and I'm, I'm in control again. So at Venly, uh, it's not a Venly talk, just giving you a, a few more words, and then we go into the, the real stuff. So I'm focusing on metaverse partnerships. So uh, I talked a lot of metaverses. For me, metaverse is gaming platforms, uh, 3D worlds. It's, there's no one metaverse. There will be a lot of metaverses interconnecting stuff with each other. I'm also godfather of the MetaRing. The MetaRing as a service, we've created uh, one of the first interoperable NFTs because interoperability is an issue on the chain, but I will come back uh, to that later. Uh, and I'm also focusing on community strategy. As you know, as a game developer, having a big community is very important. It's, it's the same in blockchain and even uh, more important that you are building on a community. And, and this is what I do for Venly and also for our uh, uh, partners and potential partners in the future. Uh, happy to share, uh, we did the Serie A funding last week, not last week, we worked on it for four months, but we raised over $23 million. Uh, and actually what we do, we help companies to enter the metaverse. And with the money we raised, we will scale up the team. We are with 40 people. At the end of the year, we will be with 100 people and helping uh, users and game studios uh, entering the metaverse. So we have two verticals where we're focusing on. First is e-commerce. We are official partner of Shopify. Maybe you know Shopify. Uh, if you want to sell an NFT in a normal e-commerce website, you can use our app and we do all the minting stuff and all the, all the other things. And we are also focusing on gaming. So our, our um, go-to-market strategy is really supporting game studios, uh, onboarding users in a very easy way because it's, it's very important. So now about the topic of the day, uh, bringing blockchain gaming to everyone. If you heard the channel, uh, the, the panel chat uh, earlier today, it's very, it's very important to have an easy way of onboarding people. So I'm just wondering, are there already companies or game studios that are building on the chain or owning NFTs or already did a, a mint of NFTs or? Yeah, not that many. So happy. I hope uh, if you leave this, uh, uh, the presentation, you learn more about what you potentially can do for your project and your studio. So. If you think about creating blockchain gaming, there are a few questions, but there are two important. Why considering going to the blockchain and how you can do it and how we can support you. Um, so first of all, why considering blockchain for your game? A few facts. Um, the blockchain gaming activity has grown for 2000% in this quarter, the first quarter, and regarding to last quarter, uh, uh, the first quarter one last year, so 2,000% of growth. And if you know that, all the chain activity, 52% of the on-chain activity was related to gaming. So there's a lot of potential, very important to understand. Everybody says we are early, it's the beginning. Yes, it's the beginning, but you see now already how is gaming helping bringing people to the blockchain. So. It's also our responsibility here in the room to bring mainstream even more to the blockchain. In March only, we, there were 1.2 million unique active wallets on the chain that play the game. That's an enormous amount of wallets that are connected to a game. And if you check in Q1 this year, there was already 2.5 billion uh, dollar raised for game investments. And if you check, last year there was like 4 billion an entire year. Now in quarter one we are already at 2.5 billion. So if we go and yeah, there's like an, uh, some issue in the, the visualization of the slide, but if you if we grow at the same pace till the end of the year, there will be like plus 150% more money raised this year. So this is very important. You can see it here the 4 billion, and we are more than 50% uh, uh, proceeded, if you check then to the 10 billion that is uh, uh, rated. So if you go then to Dapp Raider, maybe you know Dapp Raider website, if you don't know it, it's a very handy tool to check all statistics regarding games and stuff, and on-chain data about, game, uh, about DeFi and games also. So if you go to the game uh, uh, rankings, 
there are more than 1,500 blockchain games. I checked uh, just before I, I started this presentation, there are 1,564 blockchain games registered and up radar. And all, the, all the, the games that are in progress and are developing are not there yet. So there's still a big potential of blockchain games. Uh, uh, and you see like big, bigger ones, you have the Alien Worlds on the rack, you have Splinterlands, Upland. And, and if you are thinking about creating a game, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Check what other projects do, check their uh, uh, tokenomics, check how they do uh, the, the community building. It's very important that you check two successful things. There was like a, a research from Stratis, and one of the results was that 72% of the game developers, so 70% of people here in the room, would consider building an NFT game and or a blockchain game. So, and this is very important to understand. And then, to, to make more tension, 56% are planning to do it in the next 12 months. So between now and next year, so if I'm back next year, Half of the people who are thinking about uh, creating a blockchain game will already uh, started developing one. So this is very, uh, very important uh, statistics. So the time is actually now. But of course, there are a few things you should learn. Also interesting to know, from the conventional way of game development, you have to deal, you deal with game publishing and, and because they help you with marketing and stuff like that. But blockchain can help you as a game developer, as an indie studio, let revenue flow directly to you as a game developer. You know, so if you have a deal with, a, with a, a publisher and they are important in the industry, but most of the times the deal are like 70-30. So 70 for the publisher, 30 for the, the game studios, maybe 60-40, but 50-50 is already a rare, uh, a, a rare uh, uh, statistic. So if you are thinking on bringing your game to the blockchain, it's another approach of talking to publishers. It can help you getting more revenue back from the game and it can help you building your own ecosystem. And at the end of the day, you put a lot of effort and passion in creating a game. I think if your game is successful, you should earn also uh, something back from it. There are a lot of, lot of opportunities. So, and you heard it in, in uh, earlier calls, uh, chats, and you will hear it later today also. For instance, it's all about ownership. If you talk about blockchain and gaming and stuff, it's ownership. So actually, if you create a game and you have the opportunity to give ownership back to the players, that's already a, a great idea. And why? For instance, I have a daughter, she's playing like a, like a fool on, on, on Roblox, but yeah, and this and a few years, maybe she don't want to play anymore. But all the hours she invested in playing the game, she actually lose it. And it would be great if all the things she did in the game and the, process, the progress she made, that she could sell it to another kid who wants to use it, and then she has some more money yeah, to buy something else, maybe a horse or whatever. So it's actually valuing the player's time is also something you need to take into account and in designing actually your, your gameplay. And I added it also because more and more we're talking about metaverses, we, we talk about our digital identity. And one of the research, is, uh, research results was that 52% of the Gen Z gamers uh, feels more comfortable in the metaverse than in the real world. So the, they have a, a truer expression and being an avatar in the metaverse than they are actually in the real world. So if you take this again into account and in creating a game, this can help you bring even quicker and more potential users to the, to the, to the game. And just a, a side note, 77% of Gamers play it to relieve stress and anxiety. So even you people say, yeah, gaming, blah, blah, blah. No, you really help also people with, st with stress and anxiety and stuff. So also important to know. So if you're on the table next week and they are discussing about, yeah, you're playing, uh, you're making games and people are losing their time, blah, blah, blah. No, we can say, hey, 77% of the people re relieve stress and anxiety. And then they should try to play their self. So for the game devs here in the room, what can you do on the chain? And you will know a few of them. Maybe there are some new, new things that you learn here. So there are, because of the blockchain, because of the NFT space, there are new ways of raise, raising capital and raising money for your game studio. So like, for instance, the, the, uh, the Sandbox. I don't know if you know the Sandbox. Uh, we are closely related to the Sandbox. We onboard uh, more than half of the users. 70% of the users are actually onboarded via our wallet solution. They actually created... Uh, NFTs, lands, they did a land sale, people invested it, they believe and they still believe that it will become the a big creator uh, platform, so it's a creator economic. Um, and, and they raised actually capital to invest in the game and even building a bigger and a, a better game. And I hope they will release 
the sandbox very soon. Another way is thinking about how can my game stimulate the creator's economic. So for instance, you have Epic, you're playing the game Fortnite. Again, the same thing, you're putting, you're buying a lot of V-Bucks, you're adding uh, uh, money to it, and, but you have skins. But at the end of the day, nobody else out of the uh, um, um, ecosystem can earn money on creating assets for uh, Fortnite, for instance. So how cool is it if you create a game and you stimulate people to create or use your game as a platform then you get royalties from people building stuff on your shit situation. So, and that is actually what is interesting for the players, but also for publishers and for investors. If they know that there is an economic value behind the system you are building, they are eager to put money in it. And investors believe in blockchain gaming and they are uh, putting a lot of money in, into it. You saw it on one of the first screens I shared with you. Also important, if you want to onboard people, you need a way of buying assets the way we pay today. So it's cool, I'm a crypto native guy and I like Bitcoin and all that stuff, but I can go to the shop and pay with it. So if you want to bring the mainstream, we should uh, have uh, solutions to buy assets in your game, not via exchange and all that stuff. So we should work more closely with exchanges to create a better experience. So buying assets via fiat on ramp, it's already possible today and we should work more on that in the future. Also, another cool thing is renting NFTs. So uh, you can, if you do not own the money or you maybe want to play a game for uh, a short amount of time, you can rent an NFT. You rent an NFT, you get like the rewards from it, but the people who invested actually in NFT also get back a little bit of it. So it's a, a, a small guilt. You're your own, you have your own guilt, you, you rent the NFT, you get some money from it. The other side, and games are actually using it, uh, and if you want, I can share the slide deck with you on my Twitter if you can download it for, for your uh, own uh, purpose. You can also land NFTs. So how cool is it actually that you can land NX NFTs as an incentive to bring mainstream and people towards your game? So, and it will adopt more players. Avi Gochi, one of our uh, um, customers who are also using our wallet, they're doing a really great thing on ranting and landing stuff. And now I see platforms coming up who are really focusing on only the NFT renting and landing uh, uh, solution. Because at the end of the day, I want to play a game. I don't have like $5,000 to buy my, my axes and all that stuff, but I want to play the game. There are solutions coming up and the, the longer it takes, the better solution there, there will be. And then of course, gamers, the gamers are ready. So gamers are always ready. Gamers are ready for Web3. So we need to onboard them of course, but they are ready. There are guilds doing a lot of great stuff like the scholarship thing, but now they are evolving into real service companies, like investors now invest in guilds because they have big communities and a community is very important to drive people towards your community. And also DAOs. I believe next year there will be a lot of more talks if there's a, a blockchain track about DAOs. DAOs is an important uh, uh, yeah, change in the blockchain and, and I really believe that that is the way to go and, and the way we should uh, involve. Two graphs. Um, the first one is how does the game industry benefit from the, the blockchain? Like, I, I, I'm not going to, to read the slides here, but you see it again. Asset ownership for players. So people really want to have benefit from your game by owning assets because if they're buying an asset, they believe in your game. They actually, they, they actually, it's a kind of a small investment in your game. So they believe in the game you create, they buy an asset and they say, hey, I really believe in what you're doing and I hope that it maybe have more value for me in the future, but I also want to have fun. So it's an emotional connection and not just uh, NFT flipping stuff and get quick rich. Uh, and also new revenue models. So bec because we are in a, new, in a new industry, there are new revenue models. So it's also very important uh, what the benefits are of the blockchain. And then again, player rewards and all about decentralized project ownership. What will now drive the blockchain games uh, forward? Again, and here you see P2E mechanics, play to earn, but actually we should get rid of the term play to earn. We are game developers, we put a lot of passion in creating the game, and if they only want to play your game for making money, then they shouldn't play your game. It's play and earn. And the guy from Immutable X also put it on the slide. I really believe in play and earn because we give a wrong intention to people that they need to play the game just for getting, them, for getting money out of our game. And if, if this is the narrative you're talking to them, 
it's normal that they sell your token and get money out of it. So you need to think about how you communicate towards your community, towards, your, your, uh, towards the people. And then game improvements, and, and this also again, and I have another slide, not going to put a lot of detail here, but the better your game is, the more people will play, the more people will onboard, and the more money you will make. It's not about NFTs and blockchain and crypto, and then think about what game you're going to create as the other way around. And then, of course, as there's somewhere here, the ease of use. Now, today, we need to do a lot of stuff, but I have a funny slide about that, so I will come back in it uh, very soon. Things to keep in mind. We have the responsibility to educate our gamers. If you do not educate the gamers, you will have these kind of, of news slashes and news articles coming up. Because it was the same issue in 2008 when the free-to-play business, business model was introduced to the world. People don't understand what the economics are, what, uh, what, how they can get benefit out of it, and they see it actually as a threat and not as an opportunity. So if you don't educate them, why you are choosing as a studio to integrate blockchain and going to ownership of assets and reward systems, they will say, it's just a cash grab. Think about that part. And of course, if you're thinking on creating a blockchain, you need to think when I'm going to integrate the chain. And if you know when, then you should choose and which chain are you going to integrate. Also very important. There are a lot of chains and I'm not a chain, I don't, I'm not a business developer, I don't need to sell anything. But at today it's the battle of the blockchain. So they have a lot of grants and they want to attract as many as possible uh, uh, game studios because at the end of the day it's important to bring the mass towards their chain. So if you think about what's your position in talking to a chain, maybe it can help you in the next discussion when you're on the table. And this is also important, big studios, AAA studios, whatever, a lot of criticism about Web3 games. And I, I understand why. Because a lot of projects start with the cash grabs thing. They create an NFT because they, have, they know a designer, they made some cool things, they, they promise a lot toward the community, a lot of utility and a lot of stuff. I'm creating a roadmap from here to Belgium again, and it took me 24 hours, so very long. But at the end of the day, they never deliver. So, and actually, if you think about creating a game, you first start with a good concept. Very important. People should understand the concept of your game first. The second step is when you have a nice concept and you feel that people love it, you can think about, do I need to add ownership? Is there a, a, a value way of adding ownership to my, my games? Is it? Then you can start thinking about doing it. But you don't have to do it always. And people are always thinking, Blockchain gaming is immediately having cryptocurrencies and immediately having NFTs. That's not the case. You can use blockchain without having your own token or without starting flipping NFTs and doing crazy stuff just because you think you will get quick rich and build your own games without any publishers. Think about that. The third step is at reward and earning models. So you need, you need to start with a good concept first, then think about ownership, and then think about rewards and er earning models. If you're a game and you want to make money out of it, you only also have, you need an economic view on how you want to earn money with it. And if you start with it, people will feel it. They don't feel the passion of the game, they feel the, the, the evil of the money, and they, they may be going, going to buy your NFT and flip it again, and then you, you are there with no community and with people who are not happy because they lose money on the NFT and the devaluation of your project. I need to go quicker because I only have three minutes, so um, how will we adopt the masses? Um, it's cool. We, did already, we do already an, a, a good job. What we have from the game industry, we have communities. So gaming is all about communities. We have creators here in the room, so that's also another check mark. We have cases enough to show that gaming is very important. Gaming is bigger than the, the movie and the music industry, so we know all that gaming is very hot and very important. And we have dev tools. We have the Unreals of today, we have the, uh, the Unities, we have other platforms that are actually supporting developers for creating a game. So this is okay. If we then look to the crypto industry, what do we have there? We have layer two solutions. That's cool, important for transactions and all that stuff. We have grants, like I told you before. There's money enough in the space. Believe me, there is money enough in the space. But you should come up with a nice concept, with a good idea, with a nice economics, and show the people what team is behind your project. Because investors more and more invest in teams, and that's why you see Web3 companies are now try to get the best of the Web2 industry and the game studios into the Web3 because then they can put like an, a well-known head and on their studio and they get money from, from the investors. It's because we invest in people and not only in IDs. On-ramp solutions, just pay with fiat. 
and integration tools. And yay, that's where we are. Uh, a few examples, a few are our customers of us, uh, although Axie is not a customer of us, but just they did already a very good job on all these things. They have the crypto space, they have the real, the, the normal Web2 space, they created a lot of stuff and they did a really good job. So what we need, more tools to develop, to support you. We need to educate developers and end users, both end users and developers. Education, very important. We need a legal framework. I don't know what's the legal uh, stuff here in India, but in Belgium, it's a pain in the ass to have a crypto uh, 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 company. Every time we sell an NFT, I need to make an invoice, and so it's crazy. So, interoperable assets, also important. Having an asset that you cannot only use in one game, but in different games, and not in, one, in different games on one chain, but in different chains. So the interoperability is very important. We need open metaverses. There are a lot of metaverses, and there are coming new metaverses every day, but they should be open, with an open economy. And an open economy is just what we need for making interoperability uh, possible. And then we need killer games, of course, that's your responsible, and all responsible as to bringing better onboarding experience to you. And that's actually what Vanley is doing. I'm going to take you, uh, I hope my time is up, I hope I can get like three more minutes. Yes, thank you. I'm going to take you in a buying an in-game asset journey. Very funny. So, you have a game, you want to buy an NFT. Yes, I have a MetaMask. Okay, I need Ethereum to buy an, an, uh, an NFT. Okay, let's first now go to Binance or another exchange. I go to uh, Binance. Crap, K KYC, I need to identify myself. Jesus, I don't have money in it. I need to use SEPA to have money on my account or I can... Uh, do it with, with, with credit card or whatever. Yes, I have Ethereum. Uh, I have euros now uh, or whatever currency. <laughs> I have to convert it. I, uh, I'm paying taxes again or transaction cost. Yes, I finally have actually my Ethereum. Now I need to send it back to my MetaMask. So my MetaMask is connected to the game. So I'm sending it to a very user-friendly address. Yeah, very happy. And always a lot of stress. If you are sending money, you check if the, if, the, if the number is correct and do I do not forget the last character of my address, otherwise money lost. So, pending transactions. And <laughs> it's always stress. I do it like for years, it's always stress. Yes, lucky, the money is in my MetaMask. So, guys, I'm ready to buy an NFT. Oh, crap, I forgot. I need to pay gas fees. So, I need to do it again. Yes, and now I finally have my NFT. It took me like three years of my, of my life and I lost transaction cost and it took me like 20, 30, 40 minutes and this is the first time it took me two days because the KYC can take up to one, one day or two days. So not user friendly. What do we need? We need to onboard solutions to onboard actually the masses. So in Advenly, what we do, we onboard and we help game developers onboard people via Web2 stuff. So we bridge Web2 and Web3 on a very simple way. You connect, you create a, a wallet via Google Connect, for instance, or for LinkedIn or whatever social connect you have. We create a wallet for you. It's directly on the chain that the project is connected to. You can add via on-ramp uh, tokens to it. <laughs> it's your NFT. As easy as simple. If you know the sandbox, you go to the sandbox. They, re they reloaded it, but reloaded it. If you connect accounts via the sandbox, this is us. This is Venly. We have more than 1 million users already onboarded for the sandbox. So very important. And what, what is Venly? You have the consumers, the game developers, you have the blockchain, we are in the layer between. So we actually provide all the tools you need as a game development studio to focus on the game. We help you going to the blockchain. We have all solutions, all APIs, all tools uh, ready for you to speed up your process and to win time, a lot of time and money. So you built the deal is, you built the killer games, and we help you with all the tools. So we are blockchain agnostic, very important. We are blockchain agnostic. We have 12 blockchains that we support, five for NFTs. We are platform agnostic. You can do it on every platform you want. You can, uh, and we are device agnostic. So you can make a mobile game uh, on, uh, on Polygon. You can create like an, uh, an, an installable game on Immutable, whatever. We are here to support you. Because you don't choose for a, a chain, you choose for a solution. And it's our responsibility to bring the chains towards our solution. And when there's a nice and an, an interesting blockchain, we will onboard them and we will assure that when you need to change from a, change from a chain, we'd help you without changing your solution. 
It's not a lie that we are focusing on gaming. These are the projects, 70% is game and metaverse related. And we onboarded over 2.4 million users already in our Venly uh, economy. And we are onboarding 20K people a day. And how we can help? We have two things. We have an accelerator program. So because we raise money, we have money to support the industry. So we have an accelerator program. It's not only about the money, it's about our network. We are preferred partner of uh, Polygon, Binance, Hedera. We are working with uh, uh, um, Immutable and all these chains. So we help you actually with the technology stack. We help you with building stuff. We help you with just more than money because at the end of the day, experience is more important than money. And then the tech suite. We have a lot of tools that we can help you. Um, I'm, not, I'm going to skip it. You can see it. We also created the MetaRing. It's an interoperable NFT connected to over 15 platforms to educate the industry that interoperability is really a nice case. A screenshot, if you want. I have all the summary of all the stuff I set uh, and key takes away. So if you want to screenshot it or, or take a picture of it. <laughs> um, game play first as a game developer. Very important. Think about onboarding users. If you have a nice game, but you don't have a nice way of onboarding users, forget it. Think about how you're going to onboard users. It's not about crypto, it's not about blockchain, it's not about get quick rich, it's about the gaming and the ownership. This is very, very important. You should do it with your heart and not with your wallet. It will go from the heart via the game and your wallet, not the other way around. Think about how you will stimulate people to, to, to keep playing your game, because if you NFTs and you stimulate them to get money, they won't play your game again. And you, I think if you play a game, you want to create an, a community that is playing your game for years and you can build it and make cooler stuff. So think about how you stimulate it. Work on your metaverse strategy, like you have marketing strategy, a new buzzword, metaverse strategy. Think about how you will use the ecosystem, the Web3 ecosystem to have more uh, users and think about your distribution model. And for me, distribution is build a community, stimulate the, uh, eco the, um, the creator's economy, and actually think about all the other stuff you, you, you want to do. So the community is very important. Wag me. Thank you for having me. And sorry, I was over time, so, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. I don't think there are room for questions, but I'm here the entire day. So if you need me, you can uh, or send a tweet to me and uh, I will be around. So thank you. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for your talk. Yeah. And sorry, I was. It was a great talk. Thank yeah. you.